Ask yourself now. Why should a man at this time, vigorous and strong, and who has a prospective hope of being of the great multitude, tie himself up now to a stack of bones and a hank of hair and expect to see it out forever? Hilarious, wasn't it? Well, not really. Not even in 1941 when Joseph Rutherford gave this lecture entitled Children of the King. The repression of women and Jehovah's Witnesses. When did it begin? Where did it start? <clears throat> we know Jehovah's Witnesses like to trace their roots to the early Christian congregation. Did it start there? Well, not according to the New Testament. There are many passages in the New Testament which show women in both a teaching and leadership role. Phoebe was described as being a minister of Christ. Priscilla and her husband Aquila both instructed Apollos. Galatians 3.28, the Apostle Paul makes probably the strongest statement on this subject. Galatians 3.28 says, there is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Well, what about Sar Charles Taze Russell? Did he have a chauvinistic view of women? Well, probably somewhat less so than most 19th century men did. I came across an interesting passage on this subject in a biography published in 1923 of Charles Russell, entitled The Laodicean Messenger. And on page 40, there's this brief but revealing comment. It says, Pastor Russell always believed in giving to the sisters some part in the Lord's work. Indeed, wherever this was consistent. Hence, they were ushering at these lectures, and those lectures being a series that he was giving in Brooklyn at the Academy of Music around 1910. So it appears that things were quite a bit different in the early days of the international Bible students. So this brings us up to the time of Rutherford with his denigrating, degrading, and horrifyingly misogynistic view of women, a sample of which we heard in this opening clip. Now, Jehovah's Witnesses may not fully realize this, but most of the teachings, practices, and policies that they are currently following were instituted by this man. Indeed, they received their very name, Jehovah's Witnesses, from Joseph Rutherford. He claimed to be God's sole channel of communication on earth speaking in the name of God and Jesus Christ, and at the same time speaking such vile, despicable, and repugnant words about women. We know that the Watchtower never re-examines any of their policies or doctrines until necessity or expediency requires them to do so. So, Rutherford's repressive view of the role of women in the congregations has never been revised in the 70 years since we heard him utter those words in the opening clip. Therefore, now we have current governing body member Sam Hurd voicing these same antiquated views in the now infamous talk, The Value of Our Theocratic Sisters where he presumes to answer the question why women live and why women exist. And the three reasons that he gives uh, are number one, to serve God. Well, no problem there. Number two, to fill the need of men. And number three, to give to the man of your choosing. So this is how Sam Hurd answers the question of why do women exist? Obviously, he cites no scriptures because there are none to cite.
to support this view. Nowhere in the New Testament does Jesus utter one belittling word to or about women. Nor did any apostle ever write such a view of women, let alone the degrading view that we heard Rutherford say in the opening clip. Let's take one more listen to that view. Ask yourself now, why should a man at this time vigorous and strong and who has a prospective hope of being of the great multitude tie himself up now to a stack of bones and a hank of hair and expect to see it out forever? <laughs> 